Congratulations, you're going to go far.
He wants to soak it in and really think about what God is doing. I'm impressed with that attitude. And I was just telling his mom, Brian is just one of the nicest guys that you ever want to meet. So be sure and say hi to these guys, encourage them. There are two other graduates who couldn't be here tonight, Stacy Morlock and Stephanie Duncan. They wanted to be here, but they just couldn't tonight. So when you see them, congratulate them as well. The book that we've been giving them is a book written by Max Lucado. It's entitled, On the Anvil, Stories on Being Shaped into God's Image. And Max writes in here that the anvil is not always a pleasant place to be. It's hot, you're beat up a lot, but you're shaped into the image in which you were meant to be, into something that's useful, into a tool that can be used in the hands of God. And as you read through these stories, we hope that they're encouraging to you as you guys continue to live on God's anvil as He shapes you into His image. But we pray that God bless you in your pursuits after graduation. Let's give these guys a big hand. now that has impressed me with his ability, his personality, um, and just uh, the way he carries himself. He's, well, oh, better introduce him, Travis, Travis Block. <laughs> there he is, back here. Come on up here, Travis. Christian. They know me. They know me. I'm the world's first with names. They know me. I had to mess up. I've done so well the last month and a half, and I haven't missed once. And now I miss on. Sorry about that. I apologize. I was I was talking about him the entire time. Watch. He even got his name in front. Of me. But I haven't gotten. I haven't been able to to be around Tristan an awful lot in his personal life. So most of the things and most of the time that I've seen him has been around church and doing functions with the other teenagers and the other, uh, the other kids as we've done things. Um, so I'm going to speak mostly about the things that I've seen there. Uh, the way he treats other people, his honesty, his integrity, the things that, that really matter in life that you, don't, that you see in individuals when they're by themselves or when they're off with their friends and that you can just sit back and watch them. Tristan has a lot of those characteristics and is very strong in all those. I've been very, very proud and very honored to know him and to call him a friend. For the last three years, he's been an honor roll student at uh, Shavela. Thank you. I don't read very well either. <laughs> and, and you all entrust your kids with me. <laughs> He's got a perfect attendance from 96-97 uh, uh, attendance award, uh, social studies excellence, uh, first runner-up student of the year uh, from the Lake Elsinore Elks Club, uh, scholastic honor roll, 4.0 GPA, play soccer club, and will be attending Mur Murrieta Valley uh, High School. Uh, just wanted to congratulate him. I'm very proud of him. This young man I've known all of his life. Not all of my life, but all of his life. Uh, Christian Hudson, please. <laughs> Christian graduating from other sides, watch here. You can't just have a drink. <laughs> Christian is graduating from Comacula Middle School. He has a perfect attendance in the sixth grade. Most improved student in the sixth grade. History award in the sixth grade. He's been the ball boy for Tennessee, Tennessee. <laughs> TV, Mexico Valley High School. That'd be great. <laughs> Tennessee Valley Authority, that's the TBA to me. Anyway, the Mexico Valley High School, he's been the ball boy there for the last seven years. He probably has more tenure there than probably any of the coaches, <laughs> certainly any of the players, and probably anybody in the school. So he's uh, having been ball boy, in case any of the other opposing team have to think on either of his two brothers, 
Kiki was around there to uh, give him a bad time. So his brothers, uh, Michael and Scott, both played for the Mecca Valley, and Christian was there all those times that, that they were playing back in the ball on the field. So he's uh, very well tenured at, at the Mecca Valley before he goes to school there. Uh, he is uh, interested in the horses. He's one of the, uh, I guess, the only grandson of the Ruth and Bert husband that uh, really has only interest in the horses. He's got a horse that he rides just about every day, named Excalibur. He calls him Cal. Uh, this past year, I was able to help uh, Christian present a uh, project for school. Went out and uh, took some shots of Christian on the horse. He gave a very uh, good uh, report on the Arabian horse. So I was able to uh, help Christian with that, and we had a good time doing that together. He's, uh, he's a wonderful young man. You heard me call him Kiki. Uh, that's probably my name for him. And another uh, uncle that he had, we both call him Kiki. Uh, you'll have to get together with him to tell him where the name comes from. Being as being as Hawaiian back then, I did first time in Hawaii, but so uh, he's Kiki to me. And he probably always will be. When he gets to be 40, 50 years old, he'll still be my little Kiki. <laughs> he, uh, he has won, speaking of his horses, he's won some sorting events in Marietta, uh, winning a silver buckle there. He will be attending Temecula Valley High School uh, this coming year. And uh, I can present my nephew, Kiki. <laughs> written some things here about Nicole in your programs that she's been an honor student in student council for two years. She's had achievement awards in student council in art and mathematics and science and language arts and social studies and athletics. Is there anything else? That's about all you can have honors in. And she'll be attending Elsinore Union High School next year. Um, Nicole has a spirit about her of enthusiasm. I, I appreciate it so much. This last fall, she went with our group to the weekend gospel encampment. I didn't get to go, but I heard stories about Nicole. I heard that whenever something was, well, they have a, they have a ropes course at, at the weekend gospel encampment. A ropes course is kind of like an obstacle course made with ropes and logs and walls you have to climb over, kind of like the, going into Marines boot camp kind of. Only this is fun. It's supposed to be fun. And whenever they were let loose. Nicole was right out there. She was on things and she was doing it. And she's just a spirit of, of enthusiasm that I really enjoy and appreciate. And seeing Nicole there, although I didn't see it there, I just heard about it there. But also here, as she, you see her, as she's walking around the building and she's always bright and, and alive. And we appreciate your smiles, your spirit. And we want to congratulate you on your congratulations. Congratulations. I say congratulations. I congratulate you on your graduation. I give you this book, Nicole. Congratulations. The book that we've been giving to our juniors is William Bennett's book of virtues. Only well, this is the book of virtues for young people. It's not quite as thick, not quite as heavy. You can carry this one. The other one is really big. But what this is, is a compilation of stories of, of people and situations where they have lived according to moral values. It's people taking the values that God has given us and putting, putting them into action. And so we wanted to give these books to these young people to read. These are the stories of people who are living up to the values and the morals that God has given us. Great examples, great uh, role models to follow. Once again, let's congratulate these guys. Garrett Duncan is also graduating, but he couldn't be here with us tonight. So when you see Garrett tomorrow, congratulate him as well. Five speed, air conditioning, Alpine stereo, must sell. Sun is old enough to drive. <laughs> Things change when our children grow older. And we have to change along with them sometimes. 
Okay, dear. It's fun to watch them grow, and at the same time, I realized that without children, I would never know how old I am. They seem to date me. But it's fun to watch them grow. But it's hard to watch them grow, and sometimes it's hard to watch them leave. But an interesting thing that my children did last year in their school, my son's fourth grade, fifth grade class took on a project to raise some fish to repopulate some of the streams in Southern California with fish. <clears throat> the project he undertook involved getting some special equipment. They had to buy a large aquarium and some special cooling equipment to keep the water cold so they could raise trout. They got a, a number of eggs from a nursery. They put the eggs in the water and they, they watched as they hatched and grew into tiny little fish. And in that protected environment, they tested the water each day to keep the right temperature, the right pH balance. Everything was just right to, to nurture those fish so that they would grow. And they did. They continued to grow. And pretty soon, they were not the little eggs nor the little tiny fish, but they were, you could see, these were becoming trout. And not too long, <laughs> they're about ready for the, for the fry pan. But, but they weren't going to do that. They took the trout. And it was a hard day, but they took them to a stream in Southern California and released them. These fish that they had spent weeks with, nurturing and caring for and protecting, they gently released into this open stream. <clears throat> because in the tank, the fish could no longer grow. They would taken up the space. They needed room. They needed more experience. They needed a different food source. They needed the challenge of the moving water. They needed a lot of different things that couldn't be provided in that safe atmosphere in the aquarium. So on one hand, it wasn't easy to let them go. On the other hand, it was the only thing they could do to save the fish, was to let them go into the stream. It's kind of like our children. It's not easy to let them go. It's not easy to turn them loose into the world. And yet, that's where they're made to go. They're made to, not always to stay at home, but to go out and face the challenges of, of a bigger world, of a bigger situation. I hate seeing the kids go. I've worked with young people for 17 years before we got here. And one of the hardest things for me was every four years, Actually, it got to be every year. There's a group of the kids that I've worked with for a long time, invested my life in, and then now they're gone. And so I went through this every year. It's not quite the same as Paris letting them go, but I still have some sort of an attachment. And it's hard to see them go. But what has really been neat is to hear the news of what they're doing <laughs> coming back. I didn't always think that I was doing great things. Involved in youth ministry. Work day to day, working with kids, working through problems. <clears throat> but when I hear coming back of the things that they've done and the people that they've affected, I can see that God is doing great things to them. I just kind of agree, or I echo Paul John's statement. When he writes in 1 John, actually 3 John, he says, It gave me great joy to have some brothers come and tell about your faithfulness to the truth. And how you continue to walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. <clears throat> That's what I hope to hear about our graduates. That's what I hope to hear this news coming back about your faithfulness to the Lord. And what you're doing for His glory. It's important to remember, or to note, that those fish that were released into the stream, they were released in the stream so they could grow, but there were dangers in the stream. There were other fish, there were diseases, there were toxins in the water, there were all kinds of things that they would face, and some of those fish weren't going to make it, but a number of them would. We don't know what's going to face us out there in the world. We know that God's going to be with us. He's going to take us through if we remain faithful to Him. God has a plan for us. He's got a plan for you. 
And we know that He will do great things through Him. You guys, as you graduate and you go on, I want to ask you to please never hesitate to be a servant. Never hesitate to give yourself, even if the cost seems small, because God can use it for great things. The story is told of a young boy who ran out onto the beach early one morning. And on the beach he found an old man who was picking up starfish off the beach and throwing them into the water. He ran up to the old man and said, what are you doing? And he said, well, the tide has gone out and left these starfish on the beach, and unless I put them back into the water, they'll die. And the boy looked down the beach, and he could see miles and miles of beach and millions of starfish. And he said, the job is too great. How can you make a difference when there's so many? And the older man stooped down and picked up a starfish and threw it back into the water. He said it made a difference for that one. We don't know who we touch. We don't know the difference that we make in every acquaintance, every a, a, a account that we meet somebody. We make a difference, we rub off. And it may be little. There may be billions of people in the world, but the people you meet and the things that you do God can take those and do great things with them. My prayer for you is similar to them, the same. It's what Paul says in Ephesians 3. He says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to Him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to His power that is at work within us, to Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Graduates, as you move on into a new section of your life, be servants, but be faithful, and God will use you, and God will see you through, and He'll use you to do great things. We have dessert. <laughs>